Peggy 18. Hello and welcome to the Far Cry 4 map editor tutorial. Uh, in this first tutorial I'm just going to show you how to create a simple basic outpost. Alright, so we'll go here, we'll create a new map. When we make a new map we've got a couple of decisions to make. we got to uh, pick the mission objective and the terrain type. So for mission objectives, we have Assault, Hunt, Outpost, and Extraction. So we want to select Outpost. And under Terrain Type, you can see we've got a couple of different mountains and a couple of different islands. So we'll just select some regular mountains, click OK, and let that do its thing. Okay, so here we are in our newly generated map. I'm just going to take a look around here, see if I can find a good spot to start start building. Yeah, I think this looks as good as any. Nice open space, not too close to any edges. So, Alright, I'm just going to come down here now to Editor Settings and turn off Show Fog. It just clears things up a little bit, especially from a distance. just makes it easier to work. Alright, so the first step is to flatten out the area will make it a lot easier to work with. So I'm going to come up here to the flatten tool. I'm just going to leave the parameters as they are. And the way this works is it will set the height of the terrain to wherever it is you started holding down the mouse button. So you see if I come in here and start flattening, we just get a nice even uniform area. So I'm just going to flatten out a nice big area. Do one here for the outpost and just stretch it on out. We want to do some surrounding areas as well. Just give ourselves a nice big, big space to work in. you'll see uh, the vegetation that's placed will actually move with the terrain as I flatten it. Alright, there we go. It's a nice big space for us to work with. And there we have it. So now, I'm gonna, you can see here I've got a lot of these harsh sharp cliffs along the edges now. So I want to take the smooth tool here, once again just leaving the parameters as they are, and I'll just run this around the edge of the area that I just flattened. And it'll just get rid of these harsh sharp angles and just leave us with a lot more of a natural organic looking slope. Just do all of this around here as well. And all right, there we go. That looks good. So now the next thing that I want to do is I just want to clear up this grass and stuff that's here. It'll just make it easier to work with. I won't have to worry about it growing up through any of the objects that I place. So I'm going to come up here to the Add Vegetation tool, select that, and just for now just grab anything. It doesn't really matter. Now if you'll see if I hold Control that the circle goes from white to black. That means that I will now be removing vegetation rather than adding it. So just come along here, get rid of all of this, do the side of the cliff as well, get rid of some of these trees, just clean up that whole area so we've got a nice clean slate to work with. All right, there we go. Now, with that done, let's start building our outpost. 
So up here is the Add tool. And this is where we'll be adding most of the objects into our map. Buildings, covers, weapons, the whole whole nine yards. And almost everything is here in the Add tool. So we've got a couple of buttons across the top here. We're just going to leave Objects selected and we're going to stay here in the Small Buildings category. There's lots and lots of buildings in here. So I'm just going to grab a couple that I know and like and just place them here into our map. Garage for a little variety there. Now we're going to step up to the large buildings. So again, there's lots of them in here. So I'm just going to grab one that I like. There. I've got a little bit of open space left there, so I'm going to come down into Chortons, Stupas, and Statues, and pick this guy here, which I believe is a prayer wheel, and just put him right there. Alright, so now that I have uh, roughly placed my buildings here, I just want to grab the Move tool and just do some fine tweaking to them. So now when I select an object with the Move tool, you'll see I get these different axes and I can grab the arrow and move the object along that axis or I can click and hold on the object itself which just allows me to drag the object around. Now if I hold down control with the move tool selected I gain access to the rotational axes which allows me to rotate the object along those. So I'm just going to grab each of these objects, give them a little rotation, and move them into place. And there we go. Looking good. Now you'll see I'm zooming in and out quite a lot. Now you can just use the scroll wheel to do that or you can use the WASD controls to move the camera around as well. Alright, so now that we have our buildings in place, I'm just going to go in and add some cover objects. So back into Add, we'll stay in Objects, and this time I'm going to pick from the Containers and Crates folder. There's lots in here and there's lots of stuff to choose from in the other folders as well. But I'm just going to start here. So we'll drop in there. This guy up here. Add some sandbags up there. And we just need one more thing. Here we go. How about some stacks of opium? There they are. Alright, and once again, I'm just going to grab the Move tool and just do some fine tweaking to our objects here. Giving them a little twist like this just makes them seem a little more organic, a little more naturally placed. They don't look like they all line up with some kind of grid this way. Alright, and there we go. So now, you'll see now that we've placed some objects into our map. If you take a look down here at the object budget, you'll see we've taken a, just a wee little bite out of our meter here. Now this bar represents the, the number of objects that we can have placed in our map uh, just by a, a point system. And uh, it's a good thing to keep an eye on. It will let you know just how met how many more things you can put in your map before you run out of budget. Right now we've barely used any of it so we've got space for a lot more objects. And with our cover in place I'm just going to take us through a couple of different kinds of objects that we can add into our maps. So first off I'm going to add some explosive props. So under here we've got explosive barrels, propane tanks, all the things that you'd expect. Now if I click this Add Multiple Objects button, that will allow me to add multiple copies of the same object without having to go back into the inventory and select it each time. So let's just drop in 
a couple of explosive barrels there, and how about a couple of propane tanks over there. Cool, that's, a, that's enough of those, that's all we really need. So next, how about some fire? So under lighting and fire here, I'm just going to scroll down and select the roasting spit. You can see that it already has an active flame and smoke effect going on it. So we'll put that right there. Now the next thing we want to think about is we want to make sure that players and NPCs have access to these rooftops up here. So we'll do that in a couple of different ways. First, with a ladder. So here under climbing and navigation, they have their own section and a 12-step ladder is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm just going to come in close here, place the ladder down, and once again with the Move tool, rotate it and move it into place. So there we go. Now you'll see it's really very close to the building right now and we'll just want to make sure that that's okay. So I'm going to come up here and click on our map validation button. This will tell us if there's any problems with the map. You can see everything looks good so we're all set. Now the next thing we want to do is put in a climbable ledge a different method of getting up to this rooftop. Put that in place. Once again, using the Move tool, rotate it and position it. Now, I'm using the Control key to uh, modify the tools that I'm using to go between moving and rotating. If you ever get confused about that or want to know what kind of options you have, you can come down here to the Context Help tab, click on that, and you can see right here that it will break down all the control options that you have. What a click does, what a drag does, what shift or control will do if you hold that down. So it's a good place to look to uh, see just what kind of options you have with the controls. We're back to our budgets there. Alright, the next thing we're going to take a look at is vehicles. So let's come over here to our garage, a logical place for vehicles to be. We'll go back into Add, and here under Vehicles we've got Mobile Vehicles, which are ones that can be driven. So let's put a couple of these. We've got this little civilian car. And how about a Jeep with a mounted machine gun? That's pretty cool. So we'll put that in place. And once again, position them in a little more normal way. Now, when rotating and positioning vehicles, you'll want to make sure that they are rotated and placed in such a way that they are facing in the direction that they can just drive. That way if NPCs or the player decide to hop in and go, they can just hit the pedal. They don't have to worry about backing out of the garage or, or orienting themselves to the right direction. They're just all set to go. Alright, there we go. Those are in, in position. So now we've got a bunch of buildings and things like that, but we don't really have a lot of naturally occurring objects in our scene. So we'll go back into Add, and here under Nature, we'll just put in some nice sized rocks. There's a ton of rocks in this folder, lots to choose from. So I'm just going to put in a couple that I am familiar with. Drop this guy down over here. This guy up there, and another here, and one last one down there. Cool. There we go. Give them a little tweak if they feel they need it. And there we have them. So now, we just want to take a look 
at our validation here once again and see if we are missing anything. We can look here under the criteria section and that will tell us all the things that we need for this map to work. One of those things here is the alarm. We need at least one and we currently have none. If we double click that entry, it will actually take us right where we need to be to place that, which is here in the add tool under gameplay objects and here's the alarm. Perfect. I'll just drop that right here by the stairs and just give it a little tweak. Awesome. We're all set there. So now if we go back into the validation you can see that we now have one alarm and it has gone green signaling that it is all good to go. Now you can see I've left kind of a bit of an open area right here, and that is for our road. So if I come up here, select the road tool, asphalt is just fine. I'm going to increase the road width by a couple of meters, and then I'm going to click here to select the draw tool, which just allows me to draw down the path of the road that I desire. So we'll start a good distance out of our outpost here, and just bring that road right on in and through. And just keep drawing. There we go. That looks pretty good. We've got a couple of points that are a little too close here. So if I take the select tool here, I can grab those and just move them around a little bit give the road more of the shape that I'm after. Cool. That looks good. The next thing we want to take a look at is somewhere for our player to spawn. It's nice for the player to have a good overlook of what they're going to be getting themselves into to start with. So let's create just a little overlook right here. Flatten that out once again. Grab the Smooth tool, get rid of these sharp, harsh cliffs one more time, and there we go. Now we'll come up into the Add tool one more time, and you can see that we're still in the Gameplay Objects section, which is perfect, because here is our player spawn point. So we'll just drop that right here on the edge and give it a little spin to make sure that the player comes in facing the right direction. Excellent. Now, if you take a look at the textures in our area, you can see everything looks really, really green, even along the sides of the cliffs and stuff here. So we want to take care of that. So I'm going to come back up here and select our texture painter. It's right there. See, we've got grass and rocks right now, which is that's that's good. That's all we need. I'm just going to select the rocky cliffs and just paint along here to just make these look more like a proper cliff. That a good go. All right. That's much better. Let's take a look around. I don't think anything else really needs it that much. So we're all good to go there. Now the next thing is the outpost itself. Again, really green, lots of grass. No one's grass is that perfect. So we want to add in some dirt. Add ourselves a new texture and we'll grab the grassland ground right there. So with that selected, I'm just going to decrease my radius down to 2. I'm going to bump up the hardness and the speed to maximum while bumping up the distortion to halfway. Now this is just a nice little starting setting. You can play around with those to find one that you like, but I find this is a good place to start. It gets the texture down nice and quick, but leaves a feathery edge so it's not too harsh. Now I'm just going to place some dirt here around each of our 
objects that we've put into the map. There we go. And then you also just want to use some basic common sense when it comes to putting the dirt down. So anywhere where the grass would be ripped up, like here in the garage, the vehicles are going to be coming and going from this area, so they'll rip up that grass quite a bit. Also, we tend to build fires somewhere that's dirt, not grass, so we'll give that a nice little area there. And then just anywhere where there's going to be foot traffic, like around our prayer wheel here, and around any buildings, especially in front of doors and at the base of stairs. Put that in, make a little path there to our fire pit. There we go. And then you just generally want to rough up the area a little bit. Once again, just using common sense, anywhere where there might be some foot traffic, we'll just throw in a bit of dirt. Oh, there we go. That looks more natural, more lived in. So now we want to take a look at vegetation. Once again, going back up to our Add Vegetation button, you can see we've got grass, bushes, and trees. That's perfect. It's exactly what we want. I'm going to select the grass, and once again, I'm going to decrease my radius down to 2. Now, I'm just going to put in grass in and around the outpost, kind of where we did not place in dirt. Now if you get a little bit of grass into the dirt or you miss some grassy areas, that's eh, not the end of the world. Just helps to keep things looking consistent. We'll go around the edges here, adding in our grass. Cool, that looks good. So next I'm going to select the bushes. I'm going to bump up my radius by a couple of meters and just drop in some of these more denser bushes around the outskirts of the grass. I think that's all we really need for that. So lastly, I'm going to grab the trees and I'm going to bump up my radius all the way back to 8 meters and I'm just going to start painting trees in all over the place. Now you'll see I don't have to worry about painting vegetation here on, uh, on the road because the road will actually prevent vegetation from spawning in its area. So that's great. Now uh, other objects and buildings will not do that so you'll have to make sure to not place vegetation so that you've got trees growing up through your houses and rocks and things. I'm just going to fill this whole area with trees. Just make sure our outpost is completely surrounded. I'm also going to add some up here where the player spawn is. And there we go. That looks pretty good for vegetation. Now that we have our outpost all set up, it's time to add in some bad guys. So if we go up here to the Add AI tool, you can see we've got Wave 1 selected, which are the guys that will start out spawned in our map. Once again, there's a whole ton of different guys in here, but I'm just going to place in some basic army dudes. So we'll put an Assaulter down here. We've got a Berserker who we can place over by the prayer wheel, the beheader over here by the drugs, and we'll put a defender here by the fire. Cool. Now, you can see that some of our Wave 1 budget is now being used by this purple section of the bar. That's the AI characters that we just placed down. Each wave has its own budget, so the enemies you place in that wave will take up the budget from that particular wave. You'll also notice that there's a little blue chunk taken from each of the waves. That is actually from our vehicles here that we placed before. Vehicles also need AI, and they can exist kind of at any time. We don't know when they will or won't be there, so they take a little bit out of every wave. So that's a good thing to 
keep an eye on when you're placing your AI characters. So the next thing we want to place to kind of make the most of our AI we have in here is animation points. Once again, under the Add tool, we'll grab that. We have some different options here. We're just going to grab the ones for characters. There's a ton of variety in here. I'm just going to use the generic idle and the guard for simplicity's sake. So I'll take the idle and we'll put one down by the fire maybe over here by the alarm. We want to entice some guys over to our explosives, so we'll put one there. And I'll put one over here by the prayer wheel as well. And I'll switch up to the guards for some variety. And I'll put one here by the drugs, and one over here by our other explosive barrel. Now, something else that we've got is animation points with an object already included. Now this will uh, make sure that the NPC interacts with this object when they use this animation point. So I'm going to place in a couple of chairs around here. Now what each of these are going to do is they're going to attract the NPC to them where they will play a specified animation. So I'll position these so they're facing the fire. You'll see these orange ones that have no object. They have a little arrow sticking from them. That will indicate the direction that the NPC will face when they are using that animation point. So we'll give each of these a little tweak. Make sure he's facing the prayer wheel. Make sure our guard is watching down the road. Okay, there we go. Now the last thing we want to take care of for our enemies is reinforcements. So if we go back into the AI tool here, and under Wave, we select Reinforcement. If you scroll down, you can now see that we've got Vehicle reinforcements. Now these are vehicles that will spawn with enemies already attached and ready to go. Each of these includes the name of the vehicle and then the number of NPCs that are going to be spawned with it. So how about we start with a couple of guys on a quad. We'll spawn them down this way. And then down on this end, how about a truck with three guys in it. So we'll put that down here. So now it's important to make sure that since these guys are spawning in vehicles that they spawn in facing the right direction. Just like our other vehicles, we want to make sure that they are ready to go. As soon as they spawn in, they don't have to worry about backing up or reorienting themselves to face the correct direction. Those guys are looking good. And we also want to make sure that the player does not see them spawn in. So if we go back to objects here, we're still in rocks, which is perfect. I'm just going to scroll back down, and I'm just going to place a couple of big rocks down in front of these spawn points, which will just make sure that the player doesn't see them pop in. Now there's lots of trees and vegetation around already, which helps that cause, but these rocks will really just double up the effort. So now also N NPCs that come in, especially ones on vehicles, will opt to drive along the road. Now they will be able to move or drive around any of this open space, but they will opt for the road if possible. So it's good to have one of those in place to bring them to your outpost. Now a final touch we want to add in involving AI is some ambient AI. And this is allies or animals that you can place around the area that are non-hostile. We've got a ton of animals here in Far Cry, so let's put in some cool ones. How about some monkeys? Monkeys are pretty sweet. Place in some of those. We've got some goats here. We'll put these goat guys around. 
Maybe one more up there. And how about something big, like a rhino? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's drop in a rhino back here. Cool. And so that will just add some extra life to the map. Just make it seem a little more like it's taking part in a real world. Now, if you take a look over here at our budget once more, you'll see that the blue section of each budget has grown quite a lot, and those are our animals. They are the same as the vehicles, they need AI, and they could exist at any point in time, so they use up some of the budget for every wave. So once again, it's a good thing to keep an eye on while you're placing your AI, whether it's allies, animals, or enemies, they're all going to use the same budget. Now that our enemies and AI are in place, let's put in our pickups. We'll want to start with weapons, so we'll come back into objects, go down under weapons, and select weapons. <laughs> We've got a ton of different things to choose from, again, in here in, in Far Cry, so let's just put in some cool ones that I like. This grenade launcher is pretty sweet, so we'll place that down here on this box. And this shotgun here is another one of my favorites. So let's put that over here on the ground. And we want to make sure they're positioned correctly. You can see they're kind of down inside the surface that they were placed on. We we'll just want to fix that up by selecting the rotation tool clicking on the object. Now if I actually have the rotation tool selected, that gives me access here to the Use Snap Angles section of the tool. If I select that, you'll see that 90 degrees is already chosen, and so now if I rotate the object, it snaps automatically to the 90 degrees. So I'll twist that onto its side, and using the Move tool, just tweak it up a little bit so it's no longer down inside that box. Perfect. Now let's jump over here to our shotgun and just do the same thing. Grab the rotate tool, 90 degrees, and lift it up out of the ground. Oh, now you'll see it's not really cooperating very well right now. It won't come up off the ground too easily and when it does, it snaps up too high. Now that's because, here in the editor settings, we have Auto Snap Objects with Terrain turned on. So if I turn that off and try again, I can now do the fine adjustments we want to get it up out of the ground, but not too far. Now I'm going to turn that back on, because it's a good thing to have in general for most objects. So now that we have guns in play, of course we need ammunition. So we'll go back here to our Add tool. Under Weapons once more, we've got Ammo and Pickups. We've got a few different kinds of ammo here in Far Cry. We've got this big ammo pile here, which can be used multiple times by the player to fill up on ammo, and it also explodes when shot, so that's pretty cool. Now we also have the explosive ammo which is what our grenade launcher over here uses. And we have small ammo, which is what our shotgun over here uses. So we'll place a couple of those as well. Now, of course, we've got to have some health packs. Put a couple of these on our boxes here. And the last pickup that we want to place is some armor. And we'll put that over here with the drugs. So you'll see that each of these objects I've placed down, particularly the interactive objects and the AI, have an icon associated with it, from weapons to ammo, explosives, animation points, even vehicles and animals. They all have their own symbol or icon that is, is associated with them. So that's just an easy way to look at your map and find the things that you're looking for that might be a little too small to see from the distance that you're at. Whether again it's uh, some ammo or a weapon 
that you want to find, that's a good way to do it. So now our play space is all set up, got things to kill and things to kill them with. So now we want to make sure that the player doesn't wander too far out of the de designated play area. They've got lots of map here and we want to keep them where the cool stuff is. So if we come up here to our map limits, select that, you'll see that right now it includes the entire map. So I'm just going to grab the points and I'm just going to drag them in closer to our outpost. Now you don't want to go too close. We want to make sure that there's lots of breathing room around it and that the player has lots of space to choose from. They can come at this outpost from any angle, any direction of their choosing. So there we go. Now that's not quite the shape that I want for that. So I'm going to come up here to the Add button, which will allow me to add points to our, our limits here. And I can then create a little bit more of a forgiving shape for the player. There we go. So now we've got lots of space for the player to roam in, but it won't let them get too far from where all the good stuff is. The next thing on the list we want to look at is our environment settings. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit onto our outpost here and go up and select the environment settings. So now I've got a bunch of different stuff here. We've got time and cloud type water level, we've got snow and vista, and we've got our ambient lighting and our ambient sound. So for the ambient lighting, let's select the high mountain. You can see right away that it changes the way things look so just a little bit, and that we can fine-tune up here with the time slider. So it's high noon right now, how about we adjust that a little bit, maybe go earlier like 9 in the morning. There we go. Now we've got some more interesting shadows being cast. The sun's not just coming straight down onto everything. I'm also going to turn on the snow and the vista, which are things you're not going to be able to see here in the editor while working, but those will appear once we play the map. Now let's look up into the sky here and see what we've got for cloud options. Not bad. There, I like that. Lots of clouds in the sky. That looks good. We'll stick with that. And lastly, ambient sound. Lots in here, and we'll just select mountain again to keep things consistent. And that will just help to enhance the mood of the map that you're creating and keep things feeling all nice and consistent with the same theme here of mountains. Now with our environment settings all good to go, let's take a look at our uh, modifiers. So in here we can set the player's inventory, we can set their skills, their health, and then a bunch of different modifiers that will behave or will change the way the map or the player behaves. So I'm just going to leave the rifle, I'm going to turn up the skills to all, and I'm going to crank up the player's health to maximum. And that's all I'm going to turn on and for modifiers right now. So I'm going to position the camera here, a nice high angle shot of our outpost, because I'm going to come to Map Properties here and take a screenshot of it. Now this screenshot will be used in the map browser uh, to show players what your map looks like and it's something that the players will use to determine what maps that they want to play so make sure you pick a good one that's representative of the map you've created. Now we also will want to set our description tag down here. Now this is a method that the browser is going to use to classify maps and categorize them into different different categories. So again, you'll want to pick something that does a good job of describing your map. So I'm just going to select village here, something nice and simple. 
All right, so we're pretty well all set. I want to come up here now and look at our map validation one last time to make sure everything's all good. You can see we're green completely across the board, which means we're all set, nothing more to do. The last thing we want to do before playing is saving. So let's click Save. We'll give it a name. And click OK. All right, now that it's done its thing, it's saved, we're all done. The last thing for us to do is just to play the map. So this is our introductory screen for the editor maps. Now it will just display the name of the map as well as the objective for the map type that you have selected and it will also display the modifiers that you have chosen. And since we didn't activate any major modifiers on this map they're not being displayed but they will if you do choose them. So jumping in here, you can take a look around. You can see that the snow that we selected is falling. You can see the big white mountain vista in the background. And looking down here, you can see our outpost that we've created. So thank you for joining me in this Far Cry 4 map editor tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned some good things that will help you make your own cool maps. Now get out there and have some fun. It's time for me to get this party started.